President Biden will address voting rights later today in a speech from Philadelphia. Mr. Biden is expected to denounce the Republican-backed elections proposals that would impose restrictions on voting. He's expected to call them authoritarian and anti-American and lay out the moral case for protecting access to voting. This comes as we've seen states across the country push efforts to pass restrictive voting laws. According to the Brennan Center, as of June 21st, 17 states have enacted 28 new laws restricting access to voting this year. That includes states like Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Meanwhile, Texas Democratic lawmakers fled to D.C. Monday night to block a vote on a Republican-backed voting and elections bill. At a press conference earlier, they called on Congress to enact federal voting rights protections. We are here in D.C., our nation's capital, because we want to protect the civil right to vote for millions of Texans. We were quite literally forced to move and leave the state of Texas. We also know that we are living right now on borrowed time in Texas. And we can't stay here indefinitely to run out the clock to stop Republican anti-voter bills. That's why we need Congress to act now and pass the For the People Act. For more on this, I want to bring in Antoine Seawright and Leslie Sanchez. Antoine is a CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist. Leslie is a CBS News political analyst and Republican strategist. Welcome to both of you. Great to see you. Antoine, let me start with you. What do Democrats need to hear from the president today in terms of voting rights, especially for those Democrats who say he's not engaged enough in this fight, leaving most of the work to Congress? Well, I don't think that this is about Democrats versus Republicans, because I think the right to vote and access to voting, expanded access, should not be viewed as a Democratic versus Republican thing or a partisan thing in general. It should be an American issue. And I think what you, the country is expected to hear from Joe Biden is how we will push back against these suppression, suffocation efforts by Republicans over 300 bills in 40 some odd states after a historic election by which African Americans in particular, those who will be impacted by these restrictive laws the most, showed up in record handsome fashion to elect Joe Biden. It seems as if every time there is increased turnout among African Americans, and we saw this after the 2008 election, there are laws starting in the South implemented around the country to further restrict access to people showing up at the ballot box. The latest NPR poll I saw so it says that 56% of Americans, that's Democrats and Republicans, want to deal with expanding the right and access to vote, whereas 40 some odd percent deal with this idea of election fraud. And so, Leslie, the majority of these efforts to change voting laws are being led by Republicans. What do Republicans want to hear from the president today? Republicans across the country have had a tremendous amount of pushback. I, and it's interesting, uh, I, I would say Republicans want to hear that this is not a giant effort that is going to have a 50-state preclearance of any changes in electoral laws by the Department of Justice, that basically the DOJ has full veto power over state election laws. That's what Republicans, and I think, quite frankly, many Americans are concerned about. And that's exactly what we're talking about in the changes today. If, if you think about it, uh, everything that Antoine was saying, uh, the Republicans are in agreement with. I think many Americans fundamentally want to ensure that everybody that has the right to vote can vote and that those opportunities are there, especially for communities of color, underserved uh, working class individuals who maybe work third uh, graveyard shifts, you know, opportunities to vote in, in ways that really meet them where they are. The challenges are, uh, there's such, it's so politicized in terms of what this debate is really about. Republicans seeing it as the federal involvement over state election laws and Democrats, uh, you know, framing it as if it is, uh, these are voter suppression, suppression tactics that you saw at the turn of the 20th century. And in the middle is the truth. So it's going to be a lot of parsing out those pieces to find a compromise where I think you're going to get more agreement.
Right. The devil is in the details, as always. Um, but so, Antoine, <laughs> we did, as we mentioned earlier, <laughs> we saw Democratic lawmakers from Texas yesterday who left the state to prevent a vote on Republican election bills from happening. You know, is this really the way to counter attack, uh, you know, Republicans within your own state going up to D.C.? Well, these laws that have been filed in these states have been done by Republican-dominated legislatures, like in Texas, like in Georgia, like in Iowa, the ones that have passed. The only way for to get a response to push back or to settle in on some of the restrictive laws that have been passed in states is for the federal legislative bodies to do something and to enact legislation that will essentially supersede the Republican-led efforts in many of these states. And when you look at a place like Texas, if you look at Georgia, you look at Iowa, for people who look like me, respectfully, Tanya, the fact of the matter is we went from poll tax to having to recite uh, words, being able to check to see whether we can read or not, to counting how many bubbles you can get from a piece of bubble gum, counting how many marbles in a jar. These laws that have been implemented have been repackaged in a different way to fit the times we're living in, but they're still very restrictive voting rights and that will further suffocate our participation. That's why this speech is so important and that's why I've said so many times both in writing and on this network with my dear friend Leslie, the truth of the matter is this is the most consequential issue of our day and so this speech today by President Biden perhaps will be the most consequential speech he will give in particular speaking to mm -hmm. communities that elected him. In the, at the same breath, you have Republicans, not all of them, including my friend Leslie, who are going around <laughs> continuing the big lie that somehow or another this, this election was rigged, it was fraud, the results are not true. And so all of that's going on in the ecosystem. That's why you see what's happening in Texas with Democrats. That's why you see what's happening in New Hampshire with expanding opportunities by Republicans. And that's why the speech in Philadelphia is so important for this president. Well, Leslie, Antoine brings up a good point about timing. Why are Republicans introducing these voting laws now after one of the biggest, safest presidential elections this country has ever seen? Huge participation, uh, you know, by all official accounts, overwhelmingly um, safe and accurate. So why now? Why is this the time to bring about all of these uh, voter changes? I can't speak for all those states, Tanya, but I will tell you that these have been consistent efforts that have been going on uh, for the last 10 years. So you can even look back to the antics that the Democrats uh, in, in Texas legislature just pulled. They pulled that in May. That, of course, was this year. But you can go back several years, and these types of efforts have been going on uh, across the country to counter uh, really what is the definition, um, some would argue, of voter suppression. In Texas, they, uh, many, the lieutenant governor, for example, was arguing that he does not count voter suppression asking for identification for mail-in ballots. That is one of the things Texas is moving to do. Um, and, for example, in Texas, since 2011, when they instituted voter IDs with, uh, with voting, they've seen an increase in participation in people uh, involved in the electoral process. So that's going to be the Republican counterargument, trying to get more people legitimately into a system that has uh, the faith, the good faith uh, of the American people and the states in which they represent. And right now, it's so politicized that Republicans are talking election integrity, Democrats are talking voter suppression. And again, I keep pointing to the truth is in the middle. Some of these laws, uh, you know, really in terms of mm -hmm. ensuring the integrity of the vote make a lot of sense. Others um, are, could, can be questionable, but using a broad federal approach is not going to be one that the states are going to be happy with. And Antoine, President Biden is expected to urge Congress to pass voting rights legislation. What do you think will happen there? What is the likelihood of getting a bill passed? Oh, I'm cautiously optimistic. Here's what we do know. To do nothing perhaps could cost Democrats and this little experiment we called America uh, its future. Uh, and again, I don't see this as a Democratic versus Republican issue. This is an American issue. And I think that's why you see some Democrats are trying to onboard or encourage a bipartisan support around the places where Democrats and Republicans agree. I think what you will see in the end is Democrats and Republicans yelling about the places we agree on 
and whispering about the places we disagree on and to get something. Keep in mind the legislative process is one that you don't do not get everything you want perhaps in the first strike, but you continue to work at it over time and eventually get to a place to where we move towards getting this getting to this place of a more perfect union. And so, Leslie, what are your thoughts on congressional Republican support for a voting rights bill? I don't think it's existent right now for a lot of the reasons. They're watching what the Supreme Court is doing. Uh, many Republicans have come back and said that it's not the, the current conditions of the 1964 Voting Rights Act and, and some of the things do not make sense. We see what is being presented today. Um, and. And it's not the right solution. Uh, and, and they're going to push back on that more so because of this idea of federalizing statewide elections, of this broad scope that they believe can be politicized even further if there's a pre-clearance process for any movement in electoral laws that has to go through the Department of Justice. Uh, that's a non-starter when you're talking about, you know, do you make it all 50 states? Do you go back to uh, the ex-Confederate states? Like, there's not an agreement um, on what that would look like and how broad-reaching and what powers it would give the federal government. Those things have to be parsed out versus these broad kind of brushstrokes of, of protecting everyone's vote. That, those are the details that Republicans have been asking about. All right, Antoine C. Wright and Leslie Sanchez, thanks to both of you.